In the last video, we looked at AIMS grid and uh, data discovery aspect of it. In this video, we are going to perform a simple data analysis using SQL. Now, if you're targeting data analyst role, having knowledge of SQL is essential. So we'll run simple SQL queries on MySQL database, and we'll see how we can get some of the insights uh, very easily using those SQL queries. So the Falcons team, which is a software engineering team, gives access of this MySQL database to data masters team, which is a, data, which is a team of data analysts. And once they get this access, uh, they will run all these queries and generate the sales insights. In future videos, I will show you uh, how having a Power BI dashboard can be much more convenient and powerful compared to these uh, simple MySQL queries. Uh, you don't need any prior SQL background. I'm going to provide all the necessary data and setup instructions. So let's get started. All right, the first thing is let's install MySQL on your local computer. I'm going to provide a link of this great video which goes through the installation instructions. So just follow the video. It is linked in a video description below and install MySQL. So when you install MySQL, you're installing MySQL server as well as MySQL Workbench. So MySQL work Workbench will allow you to see the tables and run the SQL queries. After you have installed it, uh, click on MySQL work Workbench and launch it. So when you launch it, it looks something like this. Now you can create a new connection and I will call it Dev, let's say Sales Insights, okay? Keep other values default as it is. My username, password is root root and test connection. And it looks good. I just press OK. So it creates this new connection and now you click here. So now you're going into that connection. If you want to check the server status, you can click on administration and check server status. Here it says server status running. If you're facing issues in running SQL servers, just Google it, figure it out. I don't want to make this like a full fledged SQL tutorials. There are so many tutorials out there. So just figure it out. And uh, I'm assuming that now you are at a stage where your SQL server is running and you have in the schemas, there is a default schema called SYS. Now I have given the entire dump of our sales insights database on my github page so follow uh, i have the link in the video description below so use that link and download this file called db underscore dump dot sql so i downloaded that file here db underscore dump dot sql okay many times people don't know how to clone things from github you have to just go to root repository and click on the green clone button and that way you can download the file so assuming you have downloaded this file now what i'm going to do from workbench is click on tools or rather server and say data import in the data import click this option and here go to the location so my location of the dump file is this so select that and what this will do is uh, this will create the entire database along with the records in your system okay so this is a self-contained sql file i created a database and exported the entire database to sql file for you so now all you have to do is just go here and import it then you can click on this button start import and it is importing so here it says import is running looks like it finished without an error so now you can click on this refresh icon and you will see this sales database created you will see a couple of tables here now let's look at some records from customers table so you can right click and select this and you will see this records. It might take some time uh, to get used to uh, this user interface, but don't worry, just play with it. Uh, this is actually a very simple interface. If you want to export uh, this data to Excel file, 
you can click uh, here on uh, Excel import, you know, so it, you can export the whole customer table as a CSV file. Then you can do that uh, using this option. Also, you can run uh, different queries here. So here when I, uh, what it is doing is it is printing all the records from customer uh, table. Now, if you don't know much about um, SQL and relational database, I will suggest that you do this course on Khan Academy. It is for free and that SQL course will teach you the fundamentals of relational database. What are tables, columns, foreign key, primary key and so on. In this table, I have three columns, customer code, name and customer type. These are all the clients of Atlic hardware. Okay. Let's look at transactions table because that's the most important one. Transaction table uh, contains all my transactions. So you can see columns such as product code, customer code, market code, order date, sales quantity, sales amount and currency. Now let's look at products and markets table really quickly. So here you can right click and click on products table. So these are, you know, I there are no fancy products names, so we have just renamed re this product one, two, three, etc. And if you look at the markets table, the markets table has the market code, the name of the city. So Atlic Hardware is doing business in India, so markets name would be one of the cities in India. The zone would be either south, central, or north. Now you can see some records here, New York and Paris, and there is no zone. So looks like this company did some business with New York and Paris, maybe one time business. And that's why the software engineers might have added these records here, but these records are not useful right now because right now the company is doing business only in India. When you're dealing with relational databases, you will find so many garbage, you know, because these databases have been in use for so many years. So there will be so much garbage and that's where the main challenge comes in. You have to, do data cleaning as a data analyst and deal with uh, cases like this okay you might have noticed in transactions table i had this which is sales amount is negative now that cannot be negative so i had some uh, messy data here as well also few transactions are in usd if you want to do let's say some analysis you have to uh, convert this usd into inr Otherwise, if you are trying to find out the total sum of revenue, it becomes really difficult. You cannot add this 500 with this one. So you will be facing a lot of these challenges. So let's do some primary analysis uh, of our database. In transactions, we see some records here. I want to see how many total records are there. For that, you can use this query. Select count star from sales transaction. Okay. And when you click here, it will give you the total count. You can see there is 150,000 records. So this, this is not some dummy database. It's some serious stuff going on. 150,000 sales transaction. Similarly, if you want to look at number of records in customer table, you can say select count star from sales. Sales is the name of the schema, by the way, it's here and transaction is the name of the table. So similarly, if I do customers, you know, there are 38 customers. Okay, so this looks good so far. Now, I want to show the transactions only from Chennai. So if you look at Chennai, the market code is mark 001. Okay, so let's first again print some transaction records. So you can say, select star from sales transactions limit five when you do limit five it will only print the first five records okay and there is a market code here so if you want to print only market code 001 there is a where clause so you can say where market code basically give me all the records where market code is mark 001 and when you execute this you know you get all these records again if you want to do count you can 
you can see how many transactions were performed in Chennai. So we are already doing now data analysis. We are generating insights from our data by using SQL. That's why SQL is one of the tools that you need to know as a data analyst. If your business manager asks you how many transactions we did in Chennai in total, you can go to SQL Workbench, run this query and get the answer immediately. If he wants to know all the transactions, you know, he'll, he'll be like, okay, give me the dump of all the transactions in Chennai. Then you can run this query, click on export here and export the result to CSV and give it to your business manager. So you realize how SQL can help you with your data analysis. Now, I saw this USD currency. I want to know how many transactions have USD currency. So it is simple. Again, it's a where clause. You can say currency equal to USD. And you will find there are luckily only two transactions. Somehow two transactions have USD. So when we'll build our Power BI dashboard, we will convert this USD value into INR. Okay. The next thing is, um, I want to show transactions in 2020 joined by date table. So what does that mean? Well, when I do this, okay, see I'm printing sales transaction here. Okay, fine. I get these records, but I want to know how many transactions were performed in 2020? Let's say I'm interested in particular year. One thing you can do is uh, get the year out of this column. Or if you notice, we have this date table. So this date table is very important actually. So here, so date table has a date and it will tell you what is the given year for that particular date. So we can do now an inner join uh, with this table and we can figure it out. There is a outer join as well. There is inner join and then there is a left and you know, right join. So you can read about all those joins online. Uh, it's not a rocket science. Uh, you can refer to some materials and you can get an understanding easily. So let's perform our join now. So what you will do is you will say select sales dot transactions dot star dot star means uh, print all the columns. Then you want to print all the columns from date table as well. Right. So you are printing columns from both the tables. Now you want to join those two tables together. So how do you join it? So you will say from sales dot transactions you know from sales dot transactions uh, inner join inner join sales dot date on say okay inner join Sales dot date dot date because sales is the name of the schema, date is the name of the table, and date is the name of the column here. Date on sales dot transactions dot order date is equal to sales dot date dot date oh so in you are doing inner join with sales dot date table so that was correct so now you print uh, more columns so these two tables are joined using the date columns. So now when I'm looking at this transaction, you know, the good thing is I also know the year here. See, and what I can do now is I can print all the transaction in 2020 by saying sales dot date here 
equal to 2020. So when I do this, now it will show me only the transaction from year 2020. You see, there is only 2020 here. If you do 2019, it will show you 2019 transactions. See 2019. And in 2020, now I want to, let's say I want to know the total revenue in year 2020 or total sales. So the way I can do that is, uh, I can just print sum. So I can say sum sales dot transactions dot. What is the amount? Well, sales amount, right? Sales amount. Okay. Now I know we have USD thing going on, but that is not in year 2020. So you don't have to worry about that currency. But if there was a USD currency, then you have to change the query a little bit. But when you execute this, now I got this number that there was 152 million rupees revenue in 2020. Similarly, if you do 2019, it will tell me 2019 had this much revenue. So you see the revenues are, I think, declining because previous year it was 336 million. Now it is. I think in 2020, the revenue is 142 million. So this way you can get uh, the aggregation data, the aggregation insights, you know, you can do some, you can do average. Anytime you are facing issues with SQL, just, just Google it. Google is your friend in SQL. You can say SQL average column. And you know, there are, there is so much help available in Google. See, they will show you simple table and give you all the syntax. So do not worry about this SQL syntax that much. It is actually very, very simple. All right. So now we have some, what we want is now we want the sum in Chennai. So I want to know how much business I did in Chennai. Okay. So what we can do is now we can join, uh, we can join use, we can do market code basically. Okay. So we can say where sales dot date is equal to this. Okay. And so in the where clause, you can put end and sales dot transactions dot market code is equal to you know for chennai the market code is 001 so if you look at market code here see chennai market 001 that's why okay so where is my thing and this is now showing me the revenue in chennai which is one, two, three, one, two, three, two point four million. Uh, you can also uh, show the distinct um, products. For example, if you want to know the distinct products that you sold in Chennai, then you can print this query. Select distinct product from that. And you know, this will show you the uh, distinct products, list of products that you sold in Chennai so far. So that's all I have for this video. You can run more queries and perform more in-depth data analysis using SQL. I have given the dump file on my GitHub page. So if you look at the video description below, there is a readme file link. If you go to that link, I will have instructions on how you can download this SQL dump so that you can initialize your database. Also, I have given all the queries that I ran in uh, this video on that page. So try those queries out and try to perform some analysis and try to generate some insights just using SQL. In the next video, we will use Power BI and Power BI will be connected to the same SQL database and we will do some data cleaning because you saw some USD columns. There were some negative values in sales and all of that. So in Power BI, we will initialize the model in the next video and we'll do data cleaning. 
I hope you're liking this series so far. If you are, then please give it a thumbs up, comment in the video description below, share it with as many people as possible. Me and Hamanan Vedewell, who is an experienced data analyst in a company in the UK, we both have put a lot of effort in this project. This project is giving you the feel of how data analysis projects are executed in a corporate environment in big companies. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.